this video we'll talk about opioid receptors and these are high yield video on pharmacology in subsequent video we would talk about opioid receptor agonist antagonist and their clinical relevance so stay tuned for more opioid receptors are g protein coupled receptors which binds to opioids and here the g protein is gi type that means these proteins can actually inhibit the enzyme adenylate cyclase and decrease the cyclic AMP level in the cell. In addition, these particular GPCR coupled receptors can activate potassium channels which lead to efflux of potassium ion outside the cell. But how this is important in context of physiology, we would get to know in this video. But first of all, where we can find opioids? Opioids can be found from the sap of opium poppy tree. And there are natural opioids like morphine. You might have heard about morphine in, in context of analgesics. So there are many natural opioids which are derived from opium poppy, like morphine, which is a full agonist for mu opioid receptors. And they are the major component of the opium and they are extensively used as analgesics. Other than that, codeine is another naturally found opioid, which is a weak mu receptor agonist, and it is less potent than morphine. There are others known as thebane. Thebane is a precursor for many semi-synthetic opioids like oxycodone and buperonorphine. So this is the classification of opioids. There are natural opioids, fully synthetic opioids, and in between there are semi-synthetic opioids. Natural opioids include morphine, codeine, thebane, etc. And semi-synthetic opioid include heroin, oxycodone, hydrocodone, hydromorphone, and buperonorphine. And there are synthetic opioids like fentanyl, methadone, tramadol, mepridine, loperamide, etc. So let us try to look at the synapse and try to understand what type of synaptic modulation opioid can do with the help of opioid receptors. So opioid binds to these opioid receptors and opioid receptors has distinct presynaptic and postsynaptic action. In the presynapse level, this opioid receptor can prevent the calcium influx through the calcium channel which would reduce the propensity of the release of neurotransmitter from the presynaptic terminal. Anyway, it would also decrease the adenylate cyclase and decrease cyclic AMP. In post, in, in post synapse, it would open the potassium channel and allow potassium influx. So that means it would hyperpolarize the neuron. That simply means it is, it is difficult for the postsynaptic neuron to fire an action potential. So action potential is fired when there is substantial amount of positive charge flowing in. So sodium, calcium, etc actually flows through glutamatergic receptors. Now imagine a bucket is filled by a tap and there are holes. So these potassium channels are like these holes, which are basically pumping out cations outside the cell, making the membrane more negative instead of positive. So it, it makes it difficult to reach the action potential threshold and fire an action potential. So we understood that there are two different mechanisms. One operates in a presynaptic level, another operates at the postsynaptic level. In the presynaptic level, we understood that due to lack of calcium or reduction of calcium levels, synaptic release of neurotransmitter is hampered. In postsynaptic level, there are changes in the membrane potential which leads the neuron to fire less likely to fire the action potential. Now there are different types of opioid receptors like mu opioid receptors, kappa opioid receptors and delta receptors and they are found in different locations in the brain in different levels. Most important locations are anterior cingulate cortex, prefrontal cortex, amygdala, nucleus accumbens, parietal cortex, dorsal striatum, ventral tegmental area and medulla. Other than that, they are present in many other locations in, uh, in, in, in baseline expression level. So in terms of spinal cord, opioid receptors are found in the dorsal horn, where they modulate the pain signals. In a moment, it would be clear. So now if we look at the pain pathway, there are two different types of pathway. One pathway is basically an ascending pathway, which 
brings the sensation of the pain from the peripheral organs and bring it to the brain to the somatosensory cortex so this pain pathway is the key modulator for the pain sensation so if this pathway is blocked which the opioid receptors actually do then the pain sensation to our brain would be modified right and that is how opioids actually work like analgesic now in general body knows how to control the sensations all together so there is another pathway known as descending pathway descending pathway is a pain modulation pathway so opioids actually activate these descending pathway that means overall it creates a strong block on the on the signal relay of the pain to the brain so overall opioid receptors job is to inhibit pain transmission to the brain now opioid receptors enhance the inhibitory control also that means the descending pathway and thereby they are strong analgesics now there are different receptor subtypes they have their own endogenous ligands own exogenous ligands and they have primary effects so for example there are mu kappa and delta opioid receptors and there are endogenous ligands for them mu receptor endogenous ligands are beta endorphin and they actually help in analgesia feeling of euphoria they can lead to rep uh, respiratory depression they decrease the gi mobility and create physical dependence kappa receptors binds to dynorphins they also give rise to analgesia especially they have a spinal component to it and also they have a uh, use of using uh, using them as a sedative so they have a sedation effect then there are delta re receptors which bind to enkephalins and they also give rise to analgesia they have antidepressant effect and they can also decrease gi mobility so overall if we look at all these receptors and opioid signaling one thing is very common that is analgesia because each of these opioids modulate the pain relay pathway in the brain and pain modulation pathway in the brain now there are different kinds of opioid receptor modulators there are full agonist like morphine fentanyl heroin and they are strong agonist for the mu receptors there are partial agonist like uh, buprenorphine so they basically are partial agonist for kappa receptors and mu receptors there are mixed agonist or antagonist such as uh, nalbufine and pentazosine they are kappa receptor agonist and mu receptor antagonist and there are other antagonist such as naloxone and naltrexone they are antagonists for the mu receptor so each of these antagonist has their own role in terms of physiology so we would understand that in different videos but this is a quick summary and overview so overall in this video we understood how at a molecular level opioid receptor can uh, modulate the pain pathway so i hope this was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe